Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying your Easter break so far. I've had an amazing Easter break. I've just came back from my uncles out in the countryside and that. Came back for you guys to make a War Talk video where we're talking about the Newcastle Knights versus the New Zealand Warriors game over the weekend and what I saw within this game and all that sort of stuff. As we do pretty much every week, we talk about, about Warriors. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe down below and yeah, let's get straight into the video. So first of all, I want to talk about the game as a whole and then I'll talk about our negatives and then the positives to finish off the video and really good positives then maybe touch on the game we got coming up against the Cowboys so overall in this game losing the game 34 to 24 was pretty disappointing in general like you know we had moments in this game where we were looking like we were shifting the momentum back but we all like I think the biggest thing here was our discipline really hurt us at the end of it and so did our slow start but to start of the game we gave up tries to Domi Young and Greggy Marju that were both sort of out the set backline plays where we didn't defend them the best as possible. We had moments of like indecisive uh, plays from our outside backs and that sort of stuff in defense, unfortunately. But then grabbing a try back again through Adam Pompey, which really changed the, the shift of the game, if that made sense. Like I, I really thought that we were kind of turning the clogs over because within that first couple of minutes, we only had like a little bit of the ball, like our possession rate was pretty crazy. We had moments within that time where we were trying to get put pressure on the Knights, but then we just let it all off with a really silly, like within the 10 penalty or a ruck infringement within the 40 meter line where the Knights will get a penalty off that. And within the really good kicks from Jacko Hastings to get the Knights into really good field position and start their sets in amazing field positions that I can strike on our try line. And that really hurt us in this game. Obviously, these slow starts are really hurting us. This last, like, every game this year, we've given up the first try. Last week, it was probably our worst performance within the first, like, 10 to 20 minutes there where we gave up, like, a 20-nil lead uh, and then brought it all the way back. I I hope the boys kind of do uh, eat, like, shift that a little bit and uh, get back to trying to play a big, full performance. Uh, in our last games before that, even though we've given up the first try and all that sort of stuff, and it was pretty early on and all that, we never really let it go too far out of hand. And that was like the the Warriors thing that we were shaking, which was like not letting the scoreline get out of hand, then try to bring it back. So then we're going to come back to uh, obviously the obstruction play with Chance Nickel Clockstag. And I won't touch on this too much, but like it really did disappoint me to see that get called as an obstruction, especially when you look at the first try in the match with Domi Young, where Frizzell ran a block line and kind of did make contact with Jackson Ford, who was trying to be pushing to that outside. I don't believe Jacko would have got there and it shouldn't have affected the try. But this is more me arguing the fact that I think that chance try should have been a try. And you could have argued that a little bit later on where SJ went down when they were trying to make that cover tackle there, uh, which ended up getting that Jacko Hastings no try, that uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it was very disappointing to see that call not go our way, especially when we were starting to change the momentum of this game. And it really would have changed the momentum here, especially I think it was after the Frizzell try. We're trying to get back into that game. It was 16 to 6. It would have made it 16 12. And we were really start putting our stamp on the game just before halftime, which we've been been doing very well before. You know, obviously the big cliche that all the coaches say and all that sort of stuff is win the moments like five minutes before half, five minutes after, five minutes before, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's what wins games. Uh, we were kind of icing those moments there, but it just got taken away from us. And then unfortunately, after that moment happened, we give up a try to Phoenix Crossland. One thing about these two tries with uh, Frizzell and Crossland, I'm not too like I'm not too angry about them in any sort of way. Like they both came off really broken play kicks and that sort of stuff. So that wasn't really a big issue for me. It was more so that, you know, the first two tries with Dominic Young and Marju that we let through, this is when those moments sort of bit us in the ass. You know, the Knights' effort play and all that sort of stuff in this game was just outstanding and they got rewarded with those two big moments there that the ball bounced in their direction and that only comes when you have a full effort performance and the Knights have been doing that for the last how many weeks now the Knights are a really classy outfit at the moment Jacko Hastings get them on the like, right side of the field Frizzell's been fucking awesome for them too so I feel like that's what's happened there and then coming out of half time we shifted this momentum into our favor. We scored a couple of nice tries with Kossi. Uh, another Pompey try, the second Pompey try. Really shifted it into our favor. We got within, I think it was six points in this one or four. But anyway, we started to really get a grip of this game. And big thing in this one that really took it away from us was, again, penalties in trying to build pressure. Where we had a couple of Shawnee's kicking game, I'll touch on it later on, was fucking A1 in this game. Unfortunately, when we were trying to put pressure on the Knights here, we gave away some silly penalties within their half, and that's really what turned the momentum back to the Knights. 
They got into great field position. They capitalized on all their opportunities where we were unable to, in most aspects, to capitalize on all opportunities. We had an Edward Cossey intercept that we couldn't go all the way with because of the effort from the Knights. They just really dug in for this one. They wanted this win at home. And you can definitely tell in this performance here. Then they end up scoring that one through Kurt Mann, which was unfortunate. Bailey Sirinan obviously not getting to his feet there. Did not look like he was in a good way for a sec. I thought maybe he could have H I and all that sort of stuff. But the boys didn't really recover on their line properly there. Obviously, Bailey Sirinan didn't get back to his feet and get back into the line or help out in any sort of defense there too. Which ended up causing some really, not, really bad like arm grab tackles, which I haven't seen this sort of like uh, that play from this Warriors this season. That was sort of a one-off sort of one. Uh, a lot of the tries that get like put on us has been on our outside or through second rollers. This is the first real time where I've seen like uh, uh, a try for the middle from like complacent middle play. So that was not the best sign and definitely what like put this lead out again and we just couldn't get back into it. We had a nice try from, uh, then Greggy Marju ended up backing that up with a try and really felt like it was so far away for us to get it. And then Jacko Ford crashing over from a really nice short ball from Chauncey. But overall, I'm not completely, like, I'm not really down on this performance. I am down, like, it's a loss in general. Like, but we did have some really nice moments here where we could have capitalized and really took over this game, but just wasn't meant to be. And I feel like a lot of that, I got to give credit towards the night side of field. Like, they were in every part of this contest. Leo Thompson had an amazing game in this one. And yeah, that's just really, in my my opinion, that's what happened. We're, our penalties that really started, to like, I think they had set, we had seven penalties called against us to about, yeah, seven penalties to five to end the game. It was at one point, I think about seven penalties to two or three. But obviously, yeah, that was the biggest thing that killed us in this one. And I think that's a pretty easy thing that Webby can change. Uh, obviously, we would love to change our starts as well, but... I think that will all come down to when we keep putting the tools together. Webby's not trying to drill into these boys about those sort of moments and that sort of stuff because we don't want to shake our game plan and change the team that we're building right now for the effort and grit. We're showing determination. We're getting towels, like our towels up for competition. And I think it's all coming off the back of players like Shawnee and Chance. Like in the moments where we are looking a bit flat, Chancey is like really, really loving those moments. So... Those are the sort of negatives too, like that kind of fed into the negatives. Obviously, the slow start was hurting us. We only had about 30% possession in the first half. Conceded another 30-point game, which is pretty disappointing on our, our behalf, but injuries and all that really started to hurt us as well. Now, I'm not a doom and gloom channel, so we'll touch on my positives of this game and the, re the way that I see the boys going. Again, like I felt like this game, Newcastle had their tails up. They wanted to play for their hometown team and really show... Uh, the home that they are a team to mess with this year. And I thought they were really good. Like the Steel City loved them at the moment. So Knights only scoring, uh, Knights scoring two tries off broken kicks. I give put that in a positive in that sort of way because I felt like in those moments of that game, uh, you know, it was just the effort players and all that sort of stuff. If we had chance scoring that obstruction call or whatever you want to call it, uh, maybe we could have end up feeding into that those moments and those moments wouldn't have happened. But completed at 80%, which is really, really good. Both teams completing over 80%, which is in the high end. So it was a very high level entertaining footy. There was not too many errors there that really hurt us in that sort of aspect. We had a couple of errors from Kossi, which were pretty unfortunate. One of them was a bit like, you know, it's that new play to ball rule and that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's just the way it is. But very good to see us still completing a very high percentage and keeping ourselves in these sort of games. First player I want to touch on is SJ. And mainly because, like, obviously, he's the SJ we know and we love. He's a new sort of SJ now. He's following game plans. He's really getting to his kick. And I just want to touch on his kicking game in this one is A1. This is the kicking game I wanted to see from Shawnee. Especially that kick where we're... Th Within the 50 to 40, he's not hunting for big bombs all the time. It was that little chip over the top into the corner, a little corner to like nudge kicks and that sort of stuff. That like players like Jonathan Thurston, Darren Lockyer, Nathan Cleary, players like that that really had in their arsenal. Shawnee's got that now in his arsenal. And I wish we kind of utilized it a little bit more, obviously with really good defense to keep the Knights in their opposite field. And we had good moments there where we did, where we were changing momentum in that sort of way. But you know, we could have done more and more of that. SJ finishing the game with two try assists, two line break assists, 439 kick meters. Uh, he was very good in this one, especially with the two try assists. Uh, both coming off a couple of really nice footwork moments. I uh, had a goosey and like a stutter step for one with uh, Adam Pompey. And a Pompey having a really nice footwork on him to get across the line in that one as well. Next up, I want to touch on Chansey. And Chansey has been fucking amazing for us this season. I can't really touch on him too. Like, he's been so good. He's been consistent. I can't like 
rate him enough at the moment. He's been so good. Finishing the game with 230 run meters, one try assist, which was a really silky one to Jackson Ford. I know it was very late in the game, but we're trying to find our way back into that contest there or even make it look a little bit less of a bigger scoreline and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, he had some good moments there. Would have ended up with that try if that obstruction call didn't get called back. He, he was just running real strong and like he was just like taking moments into his hand and I, I just love to see that from Chauncey he's a very very good football player a good fullback and this one's a bit more of a left field one but it was someone that I did take notice of in the second half and that was Tom Ale and I thought Tom Ale was fucking awesome in that second half there where he had a 30 minute stint from what I remember but finished the game with 14 runs for 144 run meters, 38 post, post contact meters, two tackle breaks and 30 tackles and no miss. And this is what we need from our bench forwards and all that sort of stuff. When Mitch Barnett comes back, I think he's got his neck injury. So he's still like got a couple of weeks out. I know the boys are being really, really precious with him at the moment. Obviously we want that, like the neck injury is such a big thing. So we want him like being confident and all that out there. Apparently from what Webby said in the press conference, he was up to play but you know they just need to give him a couple more weeks making sure they tick everything off the box and then bring him out there but when Barnett comes back obviously we'll see Bunty come back off the onto the bench more likely in my head that's what I see uh and then would run Ale and Bunty to really change momentum of the game I think that was where Bunty really like helps our team too is when he has those moments to change the game with his really hard running and that comes off you know when we start the game with him it's kind of like we want to set the tone, but he does seem like he's a bit more slower in the middle there where he can't really cover for like defensively and that sort of stuff. His attack's always been great. But Tom Ale was very, very good in this game. It's like all props to him. And last one I want to touch on is a bit more of a controversial one by Adam Pompey. And I thought he had an up and down game, but he had a really nice attacking game in this one with two tries, uh, seven tackle breaks, two line breaks. Uh, with the tackle breaks, he gave like Bratton and Bess a bath a couple of times. He had a really nice footwork at the line there. Always loved his little in and away where he has like that really stiff left palm and all that sort of stuff to get him some space on the outside. Reminds me of like a Peter Hiku where he had that little jig to the outside. Pompey's got that in his game. I think what really hurts Pompey is his indecision in defense. And it really shows like a lot of the Warriors fans are starting to pick that up now. We got Willie Arme coming back off injury soon. So maybe he's going to push it back into New South Wales Cup, which I think he would really help him, especially defensively. He just needs to be like, there's moments in the game where he just looks like he lacks contra concentration in moments and that. I don't know if that's just his body. Like he has this like very flowy body work. You know what I mean? It just looks like he's moving in slow motion. And I feel like that try that Phoenix Crossland scored where he gave Braden and Best so much time to kick that ball. I think that's where Warriors fans really got disappointed in this. And he seems to be like the punching bag at the moment, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, he's a really solid player. I always rated him like solidly. I've always thought he's been a good player, but it's just, yeah, when we have Kossi on the outside too, if he's been indecisive with this, such a young bloke like Kossi, they seem to be the punching bag of the Warriors at the moment. But I do want to touch on him. I thought he had a great attacking game in this one, especially like with the moments that he's had. But Shawnee just, yeah, put him in the right moments and uh, he capitalized. So really good work from him in that sort of sense. Uh, just needs to fix up on a couple of things. So lastly, I want to quickly touch on next week and what we couldn't expect. So we got the Cowboys at home, which is the probably the best thing that we got them at home. Uh, if we were going to Cowboys at North Queensland, even though they've been losing games at the moment, I just feel like that's the thing that worries me is they have lost two games in a row. They're going to have their tails up. They want to get a win back for Toddy Payton and all that sort of stuff. They've got some of their strike players back with Scotty Drinkwater and that. I think Nanai's out for one more week. Maybe he comes back this week. Players like that, you know, they can change your game. And when we are like, this game was vital in that sort of aspect. If we won this one more game, we would have won five from six. It would have been a really big effort from us. And then we brought the Cowboys back home. But then again, I feel like I'm confident in the boys at home. I think they're going to do really well out there. It's just more of the thing of like what type of Cowboys team is going to turn up. Because the Cowboys, when they're on and when they do turn it on, because they haven't the last couple of weeks. They are very much a top eight, a top four team, a top team in this competition, especially when all their big boys are back and firing. So that is the only big worry for us. Obviously, we have no Egan this week. So Freddie Lussick will probably fill in there, which I'm pretty confident on. I like Freddie Lussick as a player. He's been playing very, very nicely. Volkman will probably come in for Tamari Martin. But also with Tamari being out for six weeks, this does also pose the question like when Luke Metcalf comes back, do we go with Volkman, who does seem to be like he's the second fiddle when SJ is on the field? A lot of players do seem like that, where if we had someone like a Metcalf that can play second fiddle, but just fill in those moments where he can just make something out of nothing, I feel like Volkman's very much a player that needs to take 
over a whole team. I think his best ability is his kicking game and he's like getting the boys around the park where SJ seems to be doing that amazingly for us at the moment. But for this game coming up, Volkman is definitely a handy replacement. He's been very, very good in New South Wales Cup. Really nice for tries, great kicking game. So it's good to see. I think he scored a game, uh, scored today. Uh, not today, fucking whenever, uh, yesterday when we played New South Wales Cup. So he did really well out there. There's a couple of boys in New South Wales Cup who really like caught my eye. I'll be waiting for them soon. Uh, Sifakula didn't get to play in New South Wales Cup last couple of weeks, but I've, I think he's ready to go sometime soon. But then again, our forward pack at the moment is so stacked. Like, you know, everyone's been playing really, really nicely there. Hopefully Tohu is back this week. That's the biggest one. If we get Tohu back, he does show up that middle and makes me a lot more confident in that game against the Cowboys. And Viliame, if he comes back off injury, maybe he does push Bompe back into New South Wales Cup. I would be a bit more concerned. Like, I wouldn't think that Valir gets dropped because I think Valir does offer a little bit more in attack. I think a lot of boys do agree with that sort of sense. If Webby did go Valir back in New South Wales Cup and keep Pompey, I wouldn't be so turned off by it, honestly. Like, either way, I think the boys, they just need time in, uh, in New South Wales Cup or they need time up in the top grade every so often. Valir, I do think he can keep that spot, especially because Billy Arme has been playing more right center. Uh, he's a right-centered focused player. Definitely something we need on that edge there to really help with our defense and push Bombay back to New South Wales Cup. But that's my, honestly my opinion. All right, guys, comment down below your thoughts on the video. Hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Fuck, I can't talk at the moment, but you know, we keep moving on. Hopefully next week we complete really high. We get to our kicks. We do exactly what Shawnee, Shawnee did last. If Shawnee played exactly the way he did last week and we just defend a little bit better within like not giving away uh, silly penalties and that, I do feel like we win more games than we lose. So hopefully we continue to sort of like this keep this clogs keep moving and we keep putting tools in our tool bag because I feel like this team is definitely growing to be something really nice for us this season. So hope you guys enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys. Peace out.